Naba sky for cuts, pot still. Moonshine life. By J.B. Wagonmaker. This guide is aimed at educating a pot still novice about the different fractions in a distillation and to help them learn how to make cuts between them. 1. What are cuts and fractions? 2. An outline of fractions. 3. Fractions illustrated. 4. Cuts and blending the easy way. 5. What about double and triple distillations? 6. What to do with feints? 1. What are cuts and fractions? Cuts are the points in a distillation run where the stiller separates the distillate into separate fractions, divisions between sections of the run. In order to make good cuts, it is important to understand what the different fractions of a run are and how to recognize them. 2. An outline of fractions. Once you know your equipment and your mash, fractions are fairly predictable. The ABV percent will drop and temp will rise over the course of the run, and this is one indicator of cut points that can be used as a crutch to judge with. However, temperature and percent ABV are not recommended as a guide for cuts. Vapor temp is directly related to percent ABV, just basic physics. If you know the temp you can reliably predict the percent ABV, and vice versa. They tell you the same information. For example, 20% ABV output equals 98C. There is an issue of reading the temp correctly, i.e. in the right place, at the very top of the vapor path, just where it turns down into the line arm slash product condenser. But that is a very minor design detail compared to the unreliability of thermometers. Temp is no worse than percent ABV for deciding where to make the cuts, but both are rough guides at best. Cuts are, should be, ultimately made by taste and smell, not percent ABV or vapor temp. I will provide some rough figures as to where the fractions can be expected. These will be in percent ABV, as I think the average alcohol meter slash alcometer is probably more accurate than the average thermometer, and many folks don't have thermometers in their pot stills. Fractions normally follow this rough outline. 1. Four shots. This fraction is the first part of the distillate collected. A major component of this fraction is acetone, or nail polish remover. But there are other compounds in there as well. In my experience, often the very first drops of four shots that can start slowly coming over from around 40 45C have a wonderful, rich, sweet smell, but you really don't want to be drinking this stuff, headache city, lol. On a pot still, the absolute minimum that should be allocated to four shots is 150 milliliters per 25L of wash. So, for a second distillation of, say, three strip 25L washes, with no cuts made in the first distillation, you would want to discard 450 milliliters of four shots. This fraction should never be recycled or used in any way for beverages, but it does have some uses. It's a great solvent, can be saved for cleaning runs of new stilling equipment, and is great for starting charcoal BBQs, use it around the house slash shed in place of methylated spirits, denatured alcohol. In my still charged with 40% low wines, this fraction reads about 82% on the alcohol meter slash alcometer. 2. Heads Heads are a mix of methanol, acetone, ethyl acetate, and ethanol as the main components. Because a pot still does not separate the different fractions very cleanly, there will be diminishing nasty stuff and increasing hearts, ethanol, throughout this fraction. While not completely awful like the four shots, heads is generally blamed for hangovers and a sharp biting taste. Like four shots, they can smell sometimes smell a little sweet and buttery, but will have a biting, solvent-like, alcohol sting to them as well. Many seasoned shiners will start to notice heads in store-bought alcohol, especially vodkas. 
Most people find it desirable to remove the heads from finished product as well as the foreshots. There is however a lot of usable ethanol in the heads fraction, so the standard practice is to save the heads in a separate faints, see later, container for further processing. If you can't be bothered, throw them in with the foreshots. In my still charged with 40% low wines, this fraction is from about 82 to 80% on the alcohol meter slash alcometer. In our hypothetical still charge of 3 strip 25L sugar washes, I would expect to collect roughly 2 to 3 liters of heads, maybe more, I really don't like them. Some people are more sensitive to the tastes of different fractions than others, so you will have to find your own tolerances. Also, some washes will produce a lot more heads slash foreshots than others. Apple brandy, for example, is notorious for having a large proportion of heads, while for a full-bodied, sweet rum, you might actually want a touch of heads in your final, at the cost of the headache that follows the next day, probably. 3. Hearts, the hearts, or body fraction as it is sometimes called is the purest section of the run in ethanol terms. Hearts is very clean tasting and smelling, without the chemical bite of heads, but still with good flavor. When you are blending your fractions, the heart should be considered the foundation that you build your product on. Hearts will generally start around 80% ABV in a run of 40% low wines, but again, this will vary. A very conservative lower cut for, say, a mild whiskey, might be 70%. For a full-bodied spirit like rum, you may go quite deep into the tails, even as low as 50%. Some may go even lower. The hearts will probably be the biggest fraction you collect in your run, but this will again depend upon what you are making. For tails, the tails of a run are signaled by the distinctive and pretty unpleasant smell of wet dog, wet cardboard, damp socks, etc as well as the change in smell and tastes, and the dropping ABV, the collection rate for a given power input slows as well at the onset of tails, and continues to fall through the tails. Tails are rich in fusel oils, which cause unwanted tastes in your product. Sometimes you can see an oily film on top of the collected tails. Some parts of the tails, if left for a day or so, will start to develop floating crystalline, things. This is all highly undesirable in your product. As the tails progress, the underlying taste of the product will probably become stronger and more bitter, cardboardy notes will keep coming through. Late tails generally just tastes of dirty water to me. This will vary substantially depending upon the mash. The tails still have quite a high proportion of ethanol, however, and some of the deepest flavors of all can be hidden in the tails fraction. It is generally desirable to recycle these tails with the heads into the faints container and add them back to the next run. Tails are normally collected until the distiller decides the ABV returned is not worth the time and heat being applied to the still. Personally, I take down to 10%, but many people seem to use 20%. 3. Fractions One of the biggest things to get your head around with a pot still is that fractions do not separate out cleanly, reflux columns are better at it but still imperfect. The different components in the product tend to get smeared across a run. The key thing to notice here is the amount of water in each bottle increasing as ABV drops. Stripping runs are blasted out faster than a spirit run, the last run, when most make their cuts, so the separation between fractions is bad. This is of no concern at this stage, and no cuts are made. The decreasing yield of alcohol also illustrates why we normally stop our stripping runs at 20% or so, after a time, it is simply not worth the bother slash heat input for such a small return. Now let's assume that the product from this stripping run was added to the product of say two more stripping runs and dumped back in the boiler at 
then a slower spirit run is performed, so get better separation between fractions. The key thing to notice here is that there is some overlap of heads and tails with the indicated hearts cut. This is because there are desirable and strong flavors in heads and tails, and with too narrow a hearts cut, the end product will lack character and flavor. Also, aging can smooth out the harsher compounds that come with those flavors, but that is another discussion in itself. Deciding how much of the late heads and early tails end up in your product is what I consider to be the hardest part of the production process. Get it wrong and your product is either boring or harsh with painful hangovers. Fortunately, there are a few tricks to help out the beginner in this. For cuts and blending the easy way. Being capable of cutting the fractions directly off the still and without a alcohol meter slash alcometer etc. is a huge accomplishment for a distiller. But for the novice, this is a daunting art that will take runs and mistakes to perfect. There is an easier way, however. Procure a good number of small, say 500 milliliters, jars, number them, and get a big OL pot that is big enough to hold everything you'll want to blend. Collect your run in these numbered jars, and leave them to air out for a day or two with a coffee filter or similar over them to keep out the bugs and dust. Some of the more volatile and unwanted components will evaporate off over this time, and you'll be able to make better cuts and blends. Now, when the time comes to make cuts or do any further blending, you have to remember that the spirit will smell and taste different when watered down. The tails in particular seem to come out with dilution. To get around this, when tasting for blending, dilute a small sample with some very clean water in a clean glass, swirl around and mix well. Aim for a percent ABV of between 35 to 40 percent. Then have a gentle sniff of each, do it two to three times, with all the fractions. Then try tasting them in very small amounts. Don't swallow the product, spit it out. Seriously. Making cuts slash blends when drunk usually leads to a substandard product and many regrets. Rinse your mouth with water between tasting different fractions. First make the main cuts between heads hearts and hearts tails. For the novice stiller, it is probably best to just learn this first, before moving on to the more complicated and tricky art of blending. If you want to blend some of the other fractions in, start with the cleanest section of hearts and work up and down the line, adding heads and tails into your blending pot one by one. Only add very small amounts at a time. If in doubt, be conservative and blend a small amount first in a trial glass, then you haven't made an awful mistake if it doesn't taste good. Depending on your tastes and the recipe, you can expect to keep around 30 to 50% of the total volume collected in the blended product, and the rest will be faints. If you mess up the cuts or blending, for whatever reason, you can just throw it all back into the still, except for the four shots then add some water to dilute it a bit, or the back set from the run, and run it all over again. It is a good learning experience. After you have finished your blend, everything remaining can be treated as faints and reused or stored for an all-faints run. The first time you make cuts, and especially blends, it will probably be quite difficult to pick the often subtle but important differences in smells and tastes, and you may not be happy with the result. But do not be discouraged, this skill improves a lot with practice, and in many ways it is the most important skill of all for a stiller to develop. So be patient, and just keep practicing. 5. What about double and triple distillations? One very common question is how to handle cuts when doing multiple distillations. While this is a matter of personal preference, it is only strictly necessary to perform cuts on the final run, spirit run. Some distillers may however prefer to discard some foreshots on each run, and while the practical benefit of this is unclear, 
it certainly doesn't hurt. 6. What to do with faints? As you can see from the diagrams above, you'll end up with a lot of faints, parts of the run that are not hearts or foreshots, you're drinking the hearts, and foreshots must be discarded. Some distillers simply just save the hearts cut for drinking, and recycle all the faints back into the next spirit run. Some like to blend small amounts of various fractions from the heads and or tails back into the hearts, to add particular extra flavors. There is no right and wrong way. Personal preference rules here, but be careful with heads lest you end up with a raging hangover. The other common option, for those with reflux columns, is to feed your faints to the column still to strip out the remaining ethanol as neutral. Alternatively, if storage is not an issue for you, you can save up your faints until you have enough to charge your still, then do an all faints run, which will produce a very special, deeply flavorful product. This is highly recommended, for a rum at least. Other flavored spirits may vary. There is no point doing this for a neutral slash vodka, of course. If you are running an all faint spirit charge, it might be better to do these runs a bit slower than usual for a spirit run. Cuts may also need to be slightly more conservative than usual, i.e. a narrower hearts cut. The faints of this run will be pretty strong, and probably best to throw them out or turn them into neutral with the column. Let's say I was producing rum. I will do three stripping runs, with no cuts. Dilute that to 40%, and do one slow spirit run. Discard four shots, the hearts cut goes on to oak for aging, and the faints go to the rum faints container. Repeat several times. After enough faints are generated, do an all faints run. Keep hearts cut separate as a special product, discard four shots, and add faints to the neutral container for the next column distillation. After you are fully set up and so on it is quite easy to get yourself into a routine like this with the minimum of wastage, despite taking only a small hearts cut of each run. Enjoy moonshine life recipes.